Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. Do y'all remember Peloton? Yeah, uh, they have fallen off a cliff in more ways than one. And that is because they had to recall more than 2 million bikes today. The stock fell 8%. And 8% is very light compared to where this stock has been. Back in January of 2021, which is two years ago now, the stock was about $164 a share. Now it is just $6 a share. It has been a long, long road downhill since then. And in this video, we need to talk about what is actually going on with the company. And most importantly, what you can learn. Because what I learned today is that 65% are still buying shares on Peloton within the last week. Why? Wow, I, I, I do not have a legitimate answer as to why you would buy shares of Peloton. And that's not to point anybody out, but it is to show a lesson here because this is what I want you to, to learn. In investing, you wanna make sure that you are avoiding the major losses. You are not gonna be perfect, I am not perfect. There are, there are companies where I'll choose, I'll believe in, I'll do my research, and then it just loses money, okay? That that happens, which is why I come back and reevaluate and cut ties when I need to. We talked about how I had to let go of PayPal, I had to let go of Square, I had to let go of uh, of Target, right? There are times where, hey, we're wrong, and we, we leave it, and we move on, and we go and choose something better. But those weren't always obvious. Like you really can't go back and say, hey, Target was gonna lose 25% when Walmart was gonna make eight. That's very difficult to call out at that point in time, especially if you go back and see what was going on at that time. And the other issue here is when you lose money in the market, and this is just the way the math works, if you lose 50% or in the case of Peloton in the last year, 40%, you're going to need well over 40% just to break even, which makes it very, very difficult. So it's really about avoiding the potholes and honestly, avoiding the cliff. You can survive a pothole, but you can't really survive falling off, off of a cliff. So what was the cliff here for Peloton and how could we have seen this if you did not see it already? The one thing that I always talk about when we are researching stocks, even in the video we had talked about yesterday when I gave you my top five undervalued stocks, I say, what is the context? What is the environment? What is the soil that you are planting the stock in if you want to use that sort of metaphor? Back then when Peloton was soaring, when it was you know growing at 20% every day or whatever the percentage was when it took off, the environment was pandemic lockdowns. That was it. You were locked in your house. You could not go outside. People wanted to stay in shape because we were eating left and right. I gained a whole lot of weight. Thankfully, I lost a good chunk of it, but it ain't all gone. Aside from all that though, it was a perfect scenario. You couldn't go outside. You might as well get this bike. You might as well sit here and work out. Most people, not all, were saving money because they weren't traveling, weren't driving, weren't going into work every day. So they had extra money. They bought those bikes and they sat there and exercised and told everybody on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and everywhere else about how amazing their Peloton experience was. That was two years ago. How many of those people are still talking about their Peloton experience now? Not many. They have gone outside. They have gone back to the gym and whatever their normal routines are, or just going to and from work, and by the time they're back from work, they're tired and don't want to feel like hopping on a bike for 45 minutes. That's the truth, okay? Well, when we look at Peloton, that's their issue. That is their issue. If you go and look at their subscribers, and this is the other part of this, you have to look at the business. When you look at the business of Peloton for the last year and a half, you will notice that their subscribers and buyers have really been stuck between 2.5 million and 3 million. That's it, it has not grown. You cannot build a successful business on a very stale consumer base. And if you do, you don't, you shouldn't expect for the stock to grow because your costs are gonna grow over time. If your customers don't grow over time, that's an imbalance and that is something that's going to hurt you as an investor. The last thing that you also wanna pay attention to is fundamentals. We always talk a little bit, just a little bit about fundamentals. Is this company making money? And if it's not, is it at least trending in the right direction? That answer for Peloton is no. Back during their best time ever, which was the pandemic, they were still losing money, but just a little bit. Not a lot, they were still losing just a little bit of money. Now that their best times are over, they are losing billions of dollars and things have gotten considerably worse. Again, think about that. Stale consumer base, the environment has changed, meaning that people are not as interested in what, the, as what they were several years ago, and now you're also losing more money, and now your product is defective if you wanna throw that in there as well. None of those, none of those, when you look at each of those pieces together, separately, fractured, whatever way you wanna look at it, none of those say that this is a good place to put my money. 
And it doesn't say that this is a place that I think my money will grow or it's going to double or what have you in any length of time. Now, all this to say that I'm not saying it's bankrupt. I'm not saying it's going to zero. Anything can happen. But why would you just gamble and just bet and hope that anything will happen as opposed to investing in companies that don't have such a dire outlook? There are plenty of fish in the sea five of them we talked about just yesterday that can make a lot more sense and have a higher likelihood of one, just surviving through the end of the year, but most importantly, making you money and really evening out your portfolio. That is the thing that I want every investor, but especially new investors to understand. There are very, very easy ways to avoid losing tons of money. And when I say tons of money, I'm talking 20, 30, 40% and more. It's especially if you subscribe to this channel, you know it's easy to avoid those major losses. The, the small losses here and there, it happens. Even Warren Buffett chooses losing stocks from time to time, but very rarely does he take a 50% loss because these things were visible for, from miles away. We have talked about how I didn't think that Zoom was going to do well post pandemic, Peloton and several others. And that's exactly what happened. I've said the same thing about plenty of crypto coins, including Dogecoin back then as well. Go back and watch that video from a year or two ago. I said, hey, look, this sounds like a pump and dump scheme. It's going to take off, and it did, and it's going to drop shortly after, and it's going to stay there. And that is how it has been for more than 18 months now, going on two years. So you have to avoid these major cliffs, the, the giant potholes, if you will. Steer clear of them. And the way that you do that is pay attention to the environment of what is going on around the company. What is it going to enable it to be good and successful or just continue to be eh? Okay, pay attention to its financials. Are they actually making money? Are they trending in the right direction? Or is this upside down where they are spending more money than they are bringing in? And the last thing, you got to look and see whether or not this company actually makes sense for you. See how it is done in the past. If I look, why would I assume that something that's been down 40% uh, in the last year will automatically turn around? Because of what? Did the environment change? No. Are we going back into a pandemic? God, please no, right? But if that's the case, that I think that's the only way that Peloton would, would just instantly recover. That generally recover over 10 years, instantly recover. That's the only way that the company is going to turn around. That's it. And that's a long bet to make when there are companies, again, five we talked about yesterday, uh, Merck, Ulta Beauty, even T-Mobile, where it's like, hey, this makes sense. I can easily make money. I can inspect and see that they're growing their consumer base, growing their income. And that is just an easier way. Like investing doesn't be doesn't have to be hard. We have to choose the most the most unknown stock in the world and make a million dollars. Doesn't have to be doesn't have to be that way. You can score by just making layups, hitting your free throws, and just doing the fundamentals. You don't have to dunk from half court. Got it? All right. Hopefully you understand my basketball references for those that watch basketball because everybody doesn't, even though you should be rooting for the Lakers. Anyway, aside from all of that, if you want to learn more about becoming a better investor, do you know where to go? There's our members only because we are dropping a brand new list of, of stocks that are undervalued. I gave you five and I held one back. I held one very special one back because that's going to go inside our members only this coming Friday, which I guess is tomorrow. So you want to make sure that you check that out. Um, also, we have a spreadsheet inside the members only that helps you to understand how to properly value a stock. Because if you type in Peloton's info and you see that it is a negative number, probably tells you don't want to invest in it either. All right. That is it for me. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.